Hello, and welcome to the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast, where we explore the latest in life extension and anti-aging science with a dive into a month's worth of insights and new breakthroughs. This podcast is a combined effort of the Life Extension Advocacy Foundation, which operates Lifespan.io, and Future Grind, a podcast that explores the ethics and implications of emerging science and technology. I'm Ryan O'Shea, and I'll be your host. We've reached the end of May, and June is upon us. Let's look back as we continue to look forward. Remember, to find out more about any of these topics, you can visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. Exciting news to start things off, we've launched our own Lifespan.io YouTube show focused entirely on life extension. Called the Life Extend Show, or X10 for short, the show is co-hosted by Leafs Giuliano and Nicola and aims to bring life extension to the wider public in an entertaining way. The show airs weekly and two episodes have been released so far. Here's a sample. Hello everyone, this is Giuliano and Nicola. And we're hosting Life Extend Show, an all-new show from Lifespan.io. If you are not familiar with our work, let's begin with a question. How do you like being sick? And I mean seriously sick, not just with the flu or something. Whether you're young or old, you probably don't like it at all. Being sick when you're 80 isn't any better than when you're 20. <laughs> if anything, it's worse. And as you grow older, you're more and more likely to become sick and suffer from a lot of things. Most elderly people suffer from multiple chronic health conditions. And even if you be among the few lucky old people who are healthier than average, aging is still going to kill you. And you probably don't like being killed any more than you like being sick. And that's not even mentioning what it does to your friends and family. They will have to watch you wilt away because aging isn't something you can just recover from, or at least not yet. And it's also a cost for society. We spend a ridiculous amount of money on things like nursing homes and pensions, but your retirement check still can't give your health and independence back. Yes, and most people say that this is just a fact of life that can't be changed, that probably is for the best, and you should just make your peace with it. There was a time in human history when being prey for other animals was a fact of life, and if we had made peace with that, you probably wouldn't be watching YouTube right now. It turns out that we don't have to get chewed up by aging any more than by a lion. The current research shows that we actually can interfere with it and that rejuvenation biotechnologies that restore the health, independence and looks of older people back to young adult levels might become a reality fairly soon, but that's only if we actually work on creating them. We believe that these technologies will be super important for the future of healthcare and the well-being of everyone. That's why we, at Lifespan.io, crowdfund research on and advocate for rejuvenation day and night, reaching out to the world to let them know how science may defeat aging and to answer people's questions about rejuvenation. These can be some pretty tough topics and as YouTube didn't have a show explaining them, making one was the next logical step for us. We don't want to spoil too much about what you can expect from future episodes, but in the next few videos we'll take a look at why rejuvenation is a great idea and we'll address some typical concerns that people have about it. If you're just listening to the Life Extend show, you're missing out on all of the visual comedy and you're not getting the full experience. So visit our website at lifespan.io forward slash roundup to find the full thing. More great speakers have been announced for our upcoming Ending Age-Related Diseases Conference in New York City, leading Harvard geneticist Dr. George Church and Deputy Director of the Division of Aging Biology at the National Institute on Aging, Dr. Ronald Kahansky, will be joining us for two exciting days in the heart of New York City. Will you be there too? Book your tickets now. Prices will soon raise to $500. Rejuvenation startups need all the help they can get in order to overcome the daunting challenges and bottlenecks that might prevent them from taking off, which is why we've recently announced our collaboration with i Therapeutics to organize a special workshop aimed at addressing this need. The workshop, led by i CEO Dr. Kelsey Moody, will focus on all the key points that a young company in the field of rejuvenation has to consider. 
The event will take place one day before a New York City conference on July 10th at the Cooper Union from noon to 3.30 p.m. The number of participants is limited, so make sure to secure your ticket. If you're also attending our conference, the workshop is 40% off. All proceeds are generously donated by i Therapeutics to LEAF with the aim of supporting our work. LEAF President Keith Comito participated in a recent meeting hosted by the XPRIZE Foundation, where some of the brightest and most audacious visionaries caught up to brainstorm on how to boost the development of breakthroughs in the field of healthy longevity. Keith's proposal for a way to incentivize progress in the field, a prize for demonstrable, significant physiological remediation of dementia by 2030, made it to the final round. The Aging Analytics Agency, the world's premier provider of industry analytics on the topics of longevity, precision preventative medicine, and economics of aging, has included our own Steve Hill on the recently published list of the top 100 journalists covering these topics. Congratulations to Steve on this well-deserved honor. You can find the full list on our website. Leaf's Elena Malova was invited to moderate the roundtable Longevity and Health at MR Press in Moscow on May 28th. The participants discussed the importance of informing people about various evidence-based means of extending healthy life, and they also touched upon the potential of geroscience in creating medical interventions addressing the root causes of aging. One of the criticisms of life extension is the idea that life extension is selfish, or that it promotes individual well-being at the expense of the collective. But it turns out that individual well-being and longevity might actually have tangible benefits on the society. Here's a brief clip from a recent episode of the Future Grind podcast in which Dr. Anders Sandberg from Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute discusses this further. I think you can't have a collective human flourishing if you give up on the individual human flourishing. So in general, when you think about the effects of aging, it means a tremendous loss of not just uh, the individual life, but pain and suffering for people around that person and a loss of human capital, experience, etc. There is a tremendous loss that you can both put an economic value on, and that's a pretty big one, a moral value, and uh, as well as a, just a disruption of our connection to the world. People who live longer also have a good reason to care more about the long-term future. Uh, they have a good reason to care more about their environmental impact because they're actually going to see the consequences. So I think uh, we actually have a very good reason to try to live longer. And in fact, a long-lived society is probably actually likely to be a bit more humane society than one where people come and go very quickly and you can't actually trust anybody to stay around. In that later society, you would actually have people as uh, interchangeable building blocks. While in a society where people develop skills and abilities and networks over a long time, they become quite a bit more precious. I think the root of this is that a lot of people tend to assume that the group is like the individual. We tend to envision that uh, societies are like people or that governments are having an agency that functions just like our own agency. And that doesn't actually work because when you scale things up, it works very differently. It's not a good thing for society at large, I think, that uh, people die. You might certainly want to have a bit of churn. You don't want the same people as president or professor all the time. You might want to have term limits. You might want to ensure, ensure that there is suppleness in the system. And there is certainly some potential here for rigidity if people just settle in into a cozy situation and become ever more vested interests. But that is also something we can fix by doing social innovations. It's not, not dissimilar from how we handle it in other domains. So I do think that a lot of people have a slightly naive idea about what evolution or society or humanity wants. These are abstractions, and they don't have the same moral value as the actual individuals. To hear the full episode or any of our other great conversations, you can subscribe to the Future Grind podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast directory. Or visit futuregrind.org to find out more. Another misconception is that extending life and the ability to pay pensions are terribly at odds. But a closer look reveals that healthy life extension is perhaps one way to prevent a possible pension crisis. 
This is because life extension, as we use it, means a significant extension of our health span. As such, it has the potential not just to rid us of age-related diseases altogether, but also to solve the financial problems caused by the necessity of pensions and geriatrics by mitigating or eliminating our need for them. But don't take our word for it. Dive into the full long read, complete with charts and data, at lifespan.io forward slash roundup. And now for our research roundup. A new hypothesis suggests that a low-fiber, energy-dense diet may lead to microbial imbalance in the gut, which, in turn, may speed up inflammation, the chronic age-related inflammation that contributes to the development and progression of age-related diseases. Sitting behind your collarbone, the thymus is a tiny organ with a big role, producing fresh T-cells that will join the ranks of your adaptive immune system. Unfortunately, the thymus changes as you age. But in a new study, Hungarian researchers used cell secretions known as exosomes to regenerate the thymus. Recent research in China has drawn a connection between senescent cells and cataract development. Scientists from the Biomedical Research Center in the United Kingdom have shown that a combination of two antibiotics and vitamin C can kill off breast cancer stem cells in vitro by damaging their mitochondria. The company Rejuvenate Bio, led by Harvard professor George Church, is taking an anti-aging gene therapy aimed at preventing mitral valve disease in dogs into clinical trials in autumn 2019. Researchers in Russia successfully extended the maximum lifespan of mice by 28% by performing a bone marrow stem cell transplant. This increase is especially significant as the transplant was performed when the mice had already reached advanced age. The study was published in the journal Frontiers of Genetics. There is now a new database for senescent cells. The Buck Institute for Research on Aging has recently released an open access publication that lays the foundations for a global categorization of the SASP secretions of different cells in our body. Researchers at Yale have published a new study that shows, for the first time, that established advanced glycation end products can be reversed via therapeutic intervention. This is important because there are a significant number of studies showing strong associations between AGEs and the pathologies of aging-related illnesses. The researchers managed to identify an enzyme family that is capable of cleaving two types of AGEs that contribute to the development of age-related conditions. And now for some news nuggets. On our website, we published a brief overview of some of the hallmarks of aging and their impact on our health, and on a grander scale, humanity as a whole. During the Undoing Aging 2019 conference, Dr. Vadim Gladyshev and Dr. Aubrey de Grey debated the feasibility of the damage repair approach proposed by the SENS Research Foundation. We've recently released the recording of this debate, as well as Steve Hill's summary of three possible approaches to treat aging. Dr. Anna Maria Cuervo, the co-director of the Institute for Aging Studies at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and a renowned expert on autophagy, has been elected to the National Academy of Sciences. The rejuvenation startup Repair Biotechnologies has raised $2.15 million in seed venture funding for their pipeline of drugs for thymic regeneration, cancer, and more. Further commentary by the company co-founder Reason can be found on our website. Microvascularization research conducted by Volumetric Biotechnologies has been featured as a cover story in Science Magazine. This work was supported by the Methuselah Foundation. According to Bank of America analysts, the longevity industry will soon be one of the biggest in the world, worth $600 billion by 2025. The Buck Institute for Research on Aging started a new research center focused exclusively on reproductive aging to figure out why menopause exists and what we can do to safely extend fertility. The Buck Institute is also celebrating 30 years of aging research and for the occasion, it has launched a series of online conversations with its brightest minds. You can find the conversation with Professor Judith Campisi on our website. To find out more about any of our news nuggets, visit lifespan.io forward slash roundup. As we promised previously, 
Here's more from the interviews we conducted during the Undoing Aging conference. So my name is Tom Ingolia, and I run the NAD Treatment Center in San Diego, and it's paired along with a nonprofit called the Center for Research on Addiction and Brain Health. Why did I get involved in anti-aging? It really was because I discovered NAD and it cured me, and I was spending all my time at home ill. And when I, when I used this very rare therapy, I got better, <laughs> and it was, it was miraculous. And then six months later, David Sinclair had a journal in, in Cell, uh, basically stating that the, the age of mice was, was reversed with uh, NAD administration. And I thought, yeah, I, I must have somehow been a part of that experiment somehow. And so I've spent all my time trying to figure out, like, maybe, maybe we can live much longer, or maybe we can do all these things. I'm an opti I've become an optimist. I come from being so miserable to being just a, a huge optimist with all this stuff going on. I'm a believer. Everyone always says that, you know, some billionaire is going to uh, take advantage of this and then the, the little people aren't going to take advantage of this. But, you know, it, it's humanity is going to get the bulk benefit of this eventually. And, and that's, that's one of the big reasons why I'm involved is because and NAD therapy we use a lot for addiction and depression and trauma, but particularly addiction. And there was, a, there was some talk today at one of the lectures about a room's law, which is Moore's law spelled backwards. The, the cost of um, bringing a drug to market doubling every nine years. Um, th this is a real issue in, in the United States and in the world. All, we all need to work together. The only way you can change the world is, is by using groups. You can't do it alone. It's, it's just, it, it's very, very rare. And so that's what LEAF is really providing, is that to be a hub um, for everyone to kind of come together. Y y you want to do something ecological. So it's, it's good for me, it's good for you, it's good for LEAF, it's good for everybody. And that's, and that's sort of how I'm living my life right now is I'm doing things that I think are in my best interest, but I also think that they're gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna have a huge positive global impact. And so you're, you're very congruent in your actions and when, when, when you're like that, and it, it feels very good. Because <laughs> everything, everything that you're doing is altruistic and selfish at the same time, so yeah. It, it's amazing how, how well LEAF has done, you know, in the last couple of years, raising money. And, and how many different projects are outstanding. So I'm, I'm excited, I'm, I'm excited, uh, and I'm, I'm very happy for you guys and all that you accomplished. You have so much to be proud of. That's it for this episode of the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast. Thank you very much for spending another month with us and for your help in the fight against age-related disease. Whether you're donating, spreading the word, or simply listening to our content, we appreciate your help. Remember to subscribe, leave a review, and post about it on social media. This will increase our reach and introduce more people to the importance of life extension science. Don't forget, you can get additional deep dives into science, technology, and futurism on the Future Grind podcast. Find out more at futuregrind.org. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan O'Shea, and on behalf of the team at LEAF, we wanted to thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time on the Rejuvenation Roundup podcast.